lose a flag and pay the toll in this game we call the toll booth. Use two cones to create a five yard gate. This is your toll booth and place another cone five yards in front of it. Pick one player to be the defender, aka the toll keeper, and place them in the middle of the booth. Line up the rest of the team behind the cone and give them flag belts. Here's how it looks. One at a time, each player in line runs towards the toll booth. The keeper shuffles from side to side trying to pull their flags, while the runner tries to make it through with their flags intact. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Play until all the runners have made it through. Then choose a new toll keeper and play again. Players in the running lane may want to bust out all their best moves to avoid paying the toll. Remind them that the best move of all is speed and encourage players to choose a side of the gate and sprint straight ahead. Stay down. Excellent. Remind the defender to start each round in a balanced linebacker stance. Sunken hips, feet shoulder width apart, weight placed on the balls of their feet. Instead of running back and forth between the cones, we want them shuffling from side to side. Any time spent turning gives the runner more time to get through without paying the toll. Players learn the need for speed in this high-energy running and flag-pulling game. This is the gauntlet. Use four cones to create a 5 by 20 yard rectangular space. Then use more cones to mark off the 5, 10, and 15 yard lines. Give all your players flag belts and place one defender every 5 yards. Line the rest of your players up along the goal line. Here's how it works. On your call, players take turns sprinting past the defenders, who can only move laterally or side to side, while trying to keep their flags intact. Once every player has had a couple turns to run the gauntlet, players switch sides so everyone gets turns on both offense and defense. Defenders will be tempted to move vertically once an offensive player has outrun them. In the gauntlet, we need to stay on our white line. Runners shouldn't overthink things here. Remind your players that their best chance at making it to the end zone is by sprinting straight ahead. Speeding right past a defender gives them less time to pull a flag. Spin moves, jukes, or stutter steps slow things down and make it more likely you'll lose a flag. Oh, nicely done! Good work! Grab as many flags as you can in this evasive running game we call Flag Attack. Use four cones to create a square space. Give each player a flag belt and tell them to spread out throughout the space. Here's how it looks. Ready! On your call, everyone runs around trying to grab as many flags as they can, holding on to all the flags they pulled. If a player loses their flags, they continue to play and replace them with ones they pull. Good spin moves! I love the spin moves! Play short rounds, about a minute long. The player with the most flags wins the round. Flag pulling is the name of the game here, and players might try anything to protect their belts. Remind them that any move that obstructs their flag from being taken is flag guarding. No covering, tucking, or swiping allowed. Do this in the actual game, and they'll be called for a holding penalty. I saw a lot of flag guarding in there. The right way to protect flags is with jukes, cutbacks, spins, and twists. So encourage players to do their best LT impression. Make sure to hold on to that flag. Players practice evading defenders in this game we call the anchor. Use four cones to create a three-yard square. Then place another cone five yards in front of the square. Designate one player the anchor. They stand inside the square. Everyone else lines up at the starting cone. Give everyone a flag belt. Here's how it looks. One at a time, the runners try to sprint through the square while the anchor tries to pull their flag. There's just one hitch. The anchor can't move their feet. Good job. Remember, we want to try and keep our feet stable. You're the anchor. Give runners a few turns per round, rotating anchors between rounds so each player gets to try both positions. Encourage the anchor to focus on the runner's hips and flags. When pulling a flag, they should aim for the popper, where the flag connects to the belt, and where it moves the least. After grabbing hold, it's just a firm, sharp tug down. For runners, speed is their friend. Slowing down to juke or spin just gives the defender more time to pull their flags, so encourage them to keep moving. One, two, three, Mojo! Players work on flag pulling and evasive running in this game we call Cross the River. Divide players into groups of three, 
with one runner and two defenders each. For every group, place two cones about 10 yards apart to mark the banks of the river. Everyone has a flag belt. Here's how it looks. The runner stands at one cone while the two defenders spread out along the river. The runner's goal is to sprint from one river bank to the other with their flags intact, while defenders try to pull the runner's flags. Between rounds, rotate players in each group so every player has multiple turns on both offense and defense. Go! Nice! Runners should make a plan to beat the defenders before each crossing. Will they try a spin move? Side steps? Or will they rely on their speed? Just make sure they know the right of place rule. No charging directly at a defender who's standing still. Defenders, meanwhile, should practice proper flag pulling form. Eyes on the hips, reaching for the top of the flag, then pulling down with both hands. Just like that. Your players will go wild for this fast-paced tag game we call Mascot Tag. Use cones to make two goal lines 20 yards apart with a halfway marker at 10 yards. Divide players into two equal teams standing opposite each other at midfield. Everyone has a flag belt. Here's how it looks. Tell each team to name itself after who they think is the fastest animal in the NFL. Then tell your players a story. The first time you mention a team's animal, that team must turn and run to the goal line nearest them. Strangest thing, I was at the zoo the other day and you don't usually see this type of animal. It was a ram. The other team, meanwhile, immediately tries to chase and grab their opponent's flags before they can make it across. Players get a point for each intact flag when they finish. Play multiple rounds, encouraging players to keep their flag safe and accumulate as many points as they can. The key is to reach for the top of the flag and pull with both hands. Players being chased, meanwhile, should lean into their advantage, speed, and try to outrun their pursuers, not letting up until they're over the goal line. Ready, one, two, three, go! Oh, yeah! Defenders double up to stop the runner in this game we call Level Tackles. Use four cones to create a 10-yard long T-shape. Divide your team into groups of three, and within each group designate a running back and two defenders, one and two. Everyone has a flag belt. Here's how it looks. One defender stands at each end of the top of the T, while the running back stands at the bottom cone facing them and holding a ball. On your call, the running back runs towards the defenders. That's when you call out one or two. That defender tries to pull the runner's flag, while the other defender runs to the center cone and circles it before they too can close in on the running back. This means the defenders will converge on the running back from two different angles and depths. If the first defender misses the tackle, the second defender can back them up and make the flag pull. Remind them to keep their eyes on the runner's hips and reach for the flag with both hands, pulling down hard. With the running back outnumbered, they'll have to rely on all their moves, including speed, to make it through. Great job! That was the best one yet! The pressure is on in this defensive game that turns runners into rushers. It's called Rush Hour. Use one cone to designate a line of scrimmage. Place a cone five yards behind it and another one seven yards ahead of it. Divide players into groups of three, a quarterback, a rusher, and a receiver. The QB starts at the cone behind the line of scrimmage and the rusher starts at the cone in front of it. Place the receiver anywhere within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Here's how it looks. On your call, the rusher runs straight at the quarterback, trying to grab their flag and make a sack. But, once they're in touching distance, the QB throws the ball to the receiver. The rusher then pivots and runs to the receiver, retracing the path of the pass before pulling their flag. Remind the rusher to start in good sprinter's stance. As they approach the QB, we want them to drop their hips and chop their steps, so they're ready to explode in any direction. Players learn to work together when pulling flags in this game we call Defensive Duos. Place two cones five yards apart. These are our starting positions. Then add a third cone placed seven yards in front of the middle of the first two. This will create a triangle shape. Choose two defenders and place them at the starting position. Place an offensive player at the third cone facing their opponents. Give each player a flag belt. Here's how it looks. 
Close it. Good. Close that middle, guys. On your call, the offensive player starts jogging in a straight line towards the defenders. The defenders each run at an angle towards the offensive player, trying to pull the flag closest to them simultaneously. This game is all about defenders learning to work as a team. If they don't run at the same speed, then they won't reach the offensive player's flags at the same time. So you want to make sure you close the middle so they can't just run through. Got it? Everyone got it? Let's work together, guys. Here we go. Any offensive player seeing two defenders charging at them is going to want to avoid them. Remind the team that this is all about defense, so no sprinting, spinning, or juking allowed. They'll have plenty of chances to outrun the defense later in practice.